Is there anyone in the UFC that you want to go head up with? I would love to box Shevchenko in, in bare knuckle. And a lot of people will be like, oh, 48 laws of power is crazy and stuff, but it's real. It's just so real. People move like that. BKFC is right now in this amazing place. Yeah. In your own words, why would you say that is? It's raw. There's a lot of people in this promotion that weren't given chances. And there's a lot of people that are hungry here. A lot of people that want to put it all on line. Because if you go out there with Bare Knuckle and put it out on the line and take those hits, take that risk, you have something different in you. I think Bare Knuckle is very special fighters. And a lot of guys will go in there and they'll find out real quick they're not made for it. They'll find out real quick. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Adaptive Leaders Podcast. Today, I have a special guest, the first of her kind, world champion, BKFC Women's Flyweight Division. We've got Christine Barea in the building with the glasses and the shades. Just right in here. <laughs> looking icy. <laughs> Christine, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we're in your state, Las Vegas. Uh, you're, are you, you're not originally from Vegas, right? I'm, no, I'm from the Bay Area, okay. San Jose, best of. The Bay Area. The yay. The yay, yay. Yo. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Christine, the misfit, Berea. Yeah. Where does the, where does the misfit come from? I mean, look at me. <laughs> I'm a misfit. I grew up a misfit. I have never taken, you know, the path that everybody else takes. I'm, I'm different. So I'm a misfit. I've yeah. been in trouble. I've been been good. I crazy hair or different hair, shaved head, tattoo on my head, you know. So I'm just a misfit. And and it's hard for me to be good. Right. You know, I have to try <laughs> to be <laughs> good. Yeah. So I, I just I just want to represent for the misfits and you know, we can be successful. We just gotta be a little try a little harder. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I mean, that, that that takes you back to the quote, right? It's the misfit, the rebels right. that end up changing the world and, and making Absolutely. shift happen. Where did that not serve you? <laughs> you know, let's, let's take it back, right? Yeah. Your upbringing. Where did that not serve you? The Bay Area historically isn't the, the best place, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I guess anywhere you go can be, you, it is what you make it, right? So right. I just chose a different way. Um, the Bay Area could be beautiful, and, and it's dope, and there's a bunch of cool people, California, Northern California, Southern California, it, it's, they're dope people, fun, like to party, like to chill, have fun, and there's the other side of people, you know, like we get kind of crazy too, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it didn't serve me in ways where I, you know, I, I was at that point where I was a lot younger, just, I did what I want, I said what I want, there was no there was no filter on me. I, I was just very bold. Yeah. Very bold in that way. And and it's good. It could be good because then you can you can teach people things and change, you know, bad habits and yourself and people in the world. But, you know, when you don't when you're on that negative path, you're doing the opposite. Yeah. So yeah, that that's what I did for a while and, and I just if I had a problem with somebody, we're gonna fight. If right. I have if you, usually people, if we have a problem, I'm not going to be like, you're an asshole. Like, I'm just not going to say that just because it's rude. It's, yeah. it's confrontational. Back then, that was not the case. I would just be like, you're an asshole. You're a piece of shit. Like, I don't like you. Whatever. Yeah. So that part of my life led me in some bad places. In, in fights and in jails and in institutions and then I started, I got on some drugs and alcohol or, you know, smoking weed all the time, uh, drinking all the time. I was very young, so that was not good. You know, I'm not even fully developed yet and I'm drinking 40 ounces, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're bigger than me, right. <laughs> literally. So, um, again, there, then, I, and then I'm hanging out with older people that, that are doing crazy things. I've been in rolling vehicles, stolen vehicles, almost died several times and, just a crazy life. Yeah. A lot, a lot of gangsters, hanging around a lot of gangsters and just looking up to them and, you know, not knowing what that life led to and where it was going to take me. And just, it looks, it looks uh, glamorous. Mm -hmm. It looks fun. But when you get deeper into it, you just see how dark and messed up it is. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I, I'm, I have a, I'm a troubled youth too. I know you've said that before. Yeah. Uh, started dealing drugs at a young age. Mm -hmm. 
I got in with the, the gangsters and, and the people that had multiple right. felonies. Right. You had a moment where you recognized that, you know, you're seeking respect, you're, you're seeking credibility in this world. And then when you looked around, you said the environment, the people that you ended up making connections with, those weren't real relationships. Yeah, I was I was looking for respect and credibility. Mm -hmm. I, that I didn't know what that was back then, but that's what I was looking for. I was just looking to street cred. Yeah, street mm -hmm. cred and um, measuring up to what what I thought. You know, the big homie we see has all the respect and has all that, and we're like, damn, I want to, I want those kind of cars. I want that kind of respect when they walk in the room. That's the kind of stuff that I was desiring, and it just just wasn't it just wasn't it and and um it's it when you're when you're putting in work doing whatever you want to call it you end up in jail you're next to all drug addicts that that can't even think for themselves the people that don't have any future don't want have, have any hunger for success like all they care about is that next mm -hmm. hit that next moment there's no planning a future there's no care of anyone around them a lot of people not everybody in there but a, the majority there's just a lot of lost people in one little place yeah so it's very toxic and it's not what what, what we think yeah. you know what we think it's going to be in the long run yeah and then you mentioned the more credibility and more street credit you, you you got in that world where people were calling on you like yeah. go hit up this person yeah that was, you recognize that the the more you were in that world, the less the, the real relationships that your family, your friends wanted to oh, spend yeah. any time with you or and I didn't want to trust bring, you. To, I didn't want to bring anybody home because I'm not bringing these people around my right. mom, my, my dad, and all those. I'm not bringing them around, so I don't want them to know where my family lives. I don't want any of that because if I do something and they want to come, you know to my family or whatever happens then so i had it's very lonely you know yep. I, I don't want any of those people there yeah. near my family mm -hmm. can you share a defining moment where you had that you know you you had that vision of my decisions you know are going to lead to this life inevitably i know you mentioned you went to jail yeah was there, so, a defining moment for you? there was another girl that that was i was real young so i was hanging out with older people there was this she her name's Corinne, and um, she was teaching me how to slang and do all this. And then she got shot in the back of the head. Like, in the, someone was in the back of the car, shot her in the back of the head. And I'm just like, man, it's that's that's like how deep everything was. Mm -hmm. And to know that, like, I got out of that is is crazy because I was – and I was more, more violent than her. Like, mm. and I was more like in yep. people's faces than her, and, and more brave about what. Like, I was just more bold yeah. with things. So I know it's just a matter of time. Like, just just seeing things. It it's just my is it's, it's coming. Yeah, you had it's more coming. Ops, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's coming because the game's dirty, and it doesn't matter if I did anything wrong or not. If I had money or drugs that someone wa that someone yep. wanted that day. Or I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. It's done, you know. And I still don't even know why she got shot. I don't. I don't even know. And you'll probably never know. I don't want to know. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel, you know, it's messed up. And yep. those are like moments that I'm like, damn. Because I mean, it's not out here just men shooting men. I mean, it's probably some dude that shot her in the back of the head, you know. And I know it was something over drugs or something. I know it was. It wasn't just some. Um, relationship thing you know this is all she was deep yeah. you know so mentally what did that do to you when that happened I just know that I made the right choice doing what I'm doing now you know I went into the gyms I I go in there and fight yeah. you know I I focus on nutrition I focus on positivity as much as possible I focus on my workouts and I obsess on that instead of other things. Yeah. Instead of the clubs and yeah. drinking or drugs and stuff like that. I just, I like to drink after my fights and stuff like that, but I don't, it's not a, it's not a lifestyle. It's not something that I do all the time. 
And I make sure I don't do that. So if I find myself like going out too much or something, I'm like, I got to chill. Yeah. Like, cause I can be back to where I was in, in an instant or be in a, in a bad uh, situation or in a bad place just like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. And so was there like, what was the time frame from when you decided, Hey, I'm no, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, was there like a 10 year period, 15 years where you felt comfortable? Maybe like, did you find yourself looking over your shoulder a lot, even, even when you were in, in that world or do you feel like I moved away? Oh, shit. Okay. yeah, I moved away. So, so that was in, in Cali. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So that was in Cali and I moved to Vegas. So I didn't really have to worry about that too much. Um, I just kind of disappeared, left, left where I was, just let, didn't say anything to anybody really. They, you know, we have social media and stuff. People know where you're at and stuff, but I didn't, I haven't had any problems. That's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> it's been so long, are probably dead now. Mm. Or in prison for us, or like it's been a long time. So in the lifestyle we were living, everybody. I look back and like sometimes on Facebook, just people looking crazy. Yeah, I'm like, dude, what the hell? Why did you let yourself get ate up like that? Like that would have been me if I would have stayed around doing the same thing, just chewed up, spit out, not dripping at all. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Not the business for sure. Yeah. So, so now where you're at, right? The uh, a world champion. Mm -hmm. If you were to coach yourself, you know, in, in that phase of your life, and let's say moving away wasn't an option, yeah, how would you have coached yourself to maybe get out of that situation? Well, you know, I, I didn't get out right away. Okay. You know, so I didn't get right out right away. So what I just buried myself, I put myself in college, put myself in, I rented a room because in the Bay it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just, I did me and mm -hmm. I, I messed up a couple of times. And, and, um, so I would just say you, you're going to make mistakes and, and you're going to screw it up and you're going to go back to old behavior at sometimes, but you just got to keep going. You can't just let it snowball, you know, and, and keep screwing it up, keep screwing it up. You just got to fall down, get back up. It's that those cliches, those, yep. those sayings, they, they, they are true. Mm -hmm. Um, you just keep trying and keep failing and getting back up, failing, getting back up until you succeed. I've, I failed 400. We, we hear it from successful, highly successful people all the time. I failed so much. I failed more than average. Michael mm -hmm. Jordan and all these guys say they failed more than most people. And it's true because they're trying so hard and they're doing things that are so hard. And that's the same thing coming out of a dark place, coming out of um, a low place. It's extremely hard. Yeah. And a lot of people can't do it. They don't have the strength. Yeah. But you just got to put positive affirmations in your head every day. Uh, Raja, Raja, you know, if you can get a hold of a Raja, get that because that, that the, the sound frequencies, but the binary on YouTube kind of is the same thing, just a lower grade. Um, um, I listened, I would listen to a lot of motivational speakers, David Goggins type, uh, a lot of books, a lot of motivational books and just place myself around people, even though I felt uncomfortable placing myself around people that were better than me had more money than me, looked better than me, had more than me, mm -hmm. even though it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's, they said, they said, we just heard a saying the other day or today, I think if you hang around four millionaires, you're going to be the fifth. So you just have to be, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's powerful advice, right? Like what you just said, you're auditing all of your inputs, what you're experiencing visually, what you're listening to, what you're reading, like, the people you're around, every stimulus that's coming in is audited for the version of yourself that you want to see. And that's hard, right? Right. Because we're a, a lot of people, you know, it's a cliche. You're a product of your environment yeah. and you don't want to be that. But man, if everything around you, if you got a bunch of gangbangers around yeah. you, you're going to be that, that gangbanger, Absolutely. right? If, you're, if everyone you know is dealing drugs or whatever else you do, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's true. You're going to be involved in it. So you got to separate yourself audit your circle like your life depends on it because it does absolutely right? and it's not saying that you're better than anybody there you go you yeah. know it's not that oh i'm better than you i got your i'm gonna leave you here it's just you're, you're not going the same path mm -hmm. that's what that's where i struggled i think people will struggle as well because they're like oh oh you're, you think you're better than me and then it'll get to them and be like yeah that's true i'm acting like i'm better than you right. but no yeah. you just you're just they're not there yet you guys are not going on the same path it's not that i'm better than you it's just I have different 
heights I want to reach or different paths I want to take. Yeah. So I think that's extremely important to address as well. Uh, have you heard of like the poppy seed syndrome or, or that idea that if you grow too tall, people will try to cut you down? Or oh, the yeah. crabs in the bucket analogy, yeah. you get too high, you know? Yep. So you start becoming better just by, as a byproduct. Right. And then people want to bring you back down. You know, I've had experiences in my life where I was held up at gun, gunpoint. Something happened where I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Some, the, the, the spot got licked, you know, right. and in layman terms, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> somebody got robbed at the right. location I was at. So everyone there was, uh, shook down or was followed up with, you know, threats and held up a gunpoint. And, and that was the moment where I was like, I was not a part of that life or that, you know, anything just stayed cordial with friends. And when I was back in town from doing sales and stuff, right. I'd be like, Oh, let's, let's party. Yeah. Just again, wrong place, wrong time. Yep. Got held up. And I'm like, I, I literally cannot grow further unless I cut everybody off. Right. Yeah, and sure. so eventually the, the, the idea, the axiom I came up with is like audit your circle like your life depends on it. Yeah. In that moment, it was a life or death situation. Yep. You know, and it could be that fast. It could be that fast. That quick. And you're like, I'm, I'm doing everything right. Yep. You know, to the, to the, to that circle of people that I was spending time with, I was the life coach because I was the positive affirmation guy, yeah. or like <laughs> always had the bigger vision and the dreams yeah. guy, you know? And so even in that moment, didn't matter. Somebody got licked, somebody got robbed for a, a good sum of money. Mm -hmm. So nobody was exempt from that situation. And, and so that's, it's like, uh, you want to finesse it and you want to give advice that doesn't make you seem better. And we're not saying you, but eventually you will outgrow the people if they're not growing with you. Right. And everybody's capable of it. Yes. So yes. everybody's capable. It's, it's not my choice that you're not doing this. It's not my fault. You are, every human's capable yeah. of achieving whatever they want in life. It More doesn't matter what it is. If we want to put in the work and we want to put in the time, we're, we can learn it and we can achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a powerful mindset. When along that journey did you find mixed martial arts? I know you started with Muay Thai. Yeah. I um, started with Muay Thai then. Was that when you moved to Vegas or before? Before. You... I started over there. I started over there and um, I, I think I was there for like an, uh, about a year or two in the Bay uh -huh. competing Muay Thai. And then I moved here because I was just like, well, fighter, that's a fight capital. Came over to Vegas, and then that's they didn't have very many fights uh, for Muay Thai, mm -hmm. and and the promotion that I was with that I kind of came up with, they just weren't what they weren't using me, so I was just like, dude, okay, I was fourteen and 0, 13 and 0 as amateur, and then I went one and zero pro, and now they don't use me because they got to pay me, like, right. <laughs> like what? Right. Okay, I'm just gonna go to MMA because there's more, there's more fights, there's more girls, there's more opportunity. It was getting bigger at that time, so got into that. I. My amateur was probably four and one. Then I went into pro. I was one and two. I had to, um, my first one, I knocked out uh, Rachel Ostevich or head kicked her, TKO, head, uh, KO. And then, then I had, they brought me down a whole weight class down to 115, fought Tiffany Van Seuss. She's like a seven time world champion, um, glory kickboxer. Yeah. It was a great fight. Um, then I fought Karina Rodriguez and Karina Rodriguez is from Mexico city mm -hmm. and she edged me out in boxing. So she truly got me in that one, edged me out a little bit. She was longer, had better hands. And I was like, damn, I need to improve boxing. So that's when I got into a boxing gym yeah. and pff, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah. I'm so glad cause I love boxing. I wish I would have started with boxing. Yeah. Boxing is just uh, a whole nother level of beauty. Yeah. And, um, that's when bare knuckle called. So bare knuckle called me and they're like, Hey, do you want to do a, a bare knuckle fight? And I was like, no. At first I was like, <laughs> yeah, I oh, I, this is. Why, why is that the knee jerk response for most fighters? Because I thought it was an underground. Mm. I'm cool off underground because, okay, this is a bare knuckle fight underground. I have no insurance. I'm going to be. It was kind of low key. It was kind of still underground though, right? At that time. Um, no. I mean, it was, it was commissioned at that time, but I didn't know. Okay. I don't actually, I don't even think they had the first show yet. Okay. I don't even think they had, they were hitting me up before then. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw the first show with Beck Rawlings. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is commissioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want Beck Rawlings. So I've been trying to, I've been going after Beck Rawlings since day one, dude. <laughs> and, and then she hasn't, she didn't want to fight me. Mm -hmm. 
And she'll never admit it probably, but I know she didn't. <laughs> um, so yeah. So since day one, um, I, I went after Beck and that's how I found out it was real commissioned mm. instead of underground. Cause I'm not going to find underground, but I wanted to, right. I already just got out of the, the streets. Yeah. I'm not trying to go mm-hmm. back into some illegal, illegal stuff. I wanted mm-hmm. to do everything by the book from that point on. Mm-hmm. And so when I went, um, so when that happened, when, when they called me with that and I found out it was, it was legal, I was like, sign me up. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize, okay, so I'm just getting ready for fights. So I just get ready for fights. If it's MMA, kickboxing, yep. boxing, I don't care. I just, okay, okay, this is boxing. Okay, I can't, I can't kick. I can't elbow, <laughs> whatever. Right. I'm just going to punch the shit out of somebody. Right? Yeah, yeah. If MMA, okay, I, I got to worry about takedowns. Is, mm-hmm. she a, is she a wrestler? Blah, blah, blah. Get ready for that. So when I went into bare knuckle, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's boxing. What are the rules? Okay, okay. There's a clinch. Okay, I can do that. Cool. I didn't even take into consideration <laughs> like there's no gloves, right? Right. So it didn't hit me until like I was on deck, like mm. I was right there getting ready to go. I was like, okay, I don't have gloves on. Like <laughs> it hit me right there, yeah. and then it hit me for like about five seconds, mm. and then it went away. Because mm. then I'm like, okay, I'm walking and I'm seeing my pony, and then I get in kill mode. Mm. So. I get in there and then we're fighting and I'm going in there like it's a, like I got gloves on. I'm not even concerned. <laughs> yeah. Not don't even care. We don't even know anything about bare knuckle. Most of us. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I get cracked. She was a Southpaw. It was one, it was from, uh, Nate, Nick Diaz's mm-hmm. camp. A girl oh, yeah. I fought, uh, mm-hmm. Jennifer Tate. Mm-hmm. And so she's Southpaw. She hits me with the right. That was hook. your first fight. Yeah. Yep. My first fight. Uh, she hits me with the right hook. Boom took my vision oh, and i was shit. like i've never been hit where mm-hmm. i couldn't see in a fight so i just got low and i was like holy shit dude i'm about to get tko for the first time in my life mm. and i've you know undefeated muay thai fighter and i've always been a really tough fighter and mm-hmm. always went to decision and if i lost it was to, like a close decision mm-hmm. or split and um so i'm going through my head like oh my god so right when i get my vision back that's when i wrapped up Boom, boom, da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. Da, boom. <laughs> and um, yeah, shoot, I knocked her out. So, but so it, where do, where do you get that killer instinct, right? Because most people, when they experience that, yeah, they're they contract. Yeah. It sounds like you were just Dude, as no. soon as it came back on a switch. If turn. I see blood or uh-huh. if I get hit, cracked hard, yeah, I'm back up. Yeah. Like I'm like in your face. It's I don't know where it comes from. Mm. I I don't. I just have that. A crazy in me i don't know mm-hmm. a little 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 bit of crazy in me <laughs> so you would m- mom dad not no one no one comes to mind yeah it may well, come my from. brother's kind of the same way too so okay. i don't know which one we get it from mm-hmm. my dad's kind Could of crazy. Just be in your dna yeah what, what did your parents do um well my dad's construction mm-hmm. my mom she's a very sweet little <laughs> lady um but she does have fire in her mm. she does have fire in her i don't know Wait, what's I, your what's your I'm, ethnicity? I'm Native American, okay. Hispanic, Spanish, and Native American, Hispanic. The other one, it says Jew, uh, but I don't. Let go. Yeah, I'm Jew. I don't know. Like, is Jew even like a? I don't. A I don't Jewish? Know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm Jewish. I don't know. You're part of the billionaire boys club, though, right? So whatever. I, I'm. I'm waiting or for trillionaire it. boys club. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was Portuguese. So uh-huh. when, I, when it said it was, I was Jew. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. I don't, someone cheated. It was my grandma. Was my mom. No, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're saying I'm the milkman. Yeah, yeah, the milkman yeah. was a uh, Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was the it was sugar daddy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So we find out the most badass girl in combat sports is part Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most badass. It's insane. insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that until mm-hmm. about three, four years ago. Oh, and you just, I thought it was Portuguese the whole time. Yeah, you act. Yeah, that's what because I. Because I'm Faria and my. Grandfa- yeah. Great grandfather yeah. came from Portugal, so something hmm. is off. Yeah, someone I, somewhere I is lying about pry. something. I don't want to pry. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> but something's off. That's why. That's I'm, like, I'm proud of being Jewish. Like, I want to kind of dial back to the MMA career, right? Okay. Um, there's a ton of interviews, ton of content out there talking about you. You know, you were made for bare knuckle fighting. You know, like you're 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 built for that. Uh, what happened during the MMA career that you'd say, you know, like if you were to, again, reflect back, like what are the things that you think that you could have maybe worked on or 
yeah, could did you ever get go to the UFC? You weren't you're not yeah. No, I did try out though. They turned away a fair yeah, enough, a champion. Yeah, they did. Dana, Dana, Dana. Dana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I didn't my image and my marketing wasn't the best back then. Um my fight style, I believe, was amazing. Mm. I was am I was I the best no definitely not the best MMA fighter. <laughs> I didn't I don't I don't enjoy the ground game. I don't that's not something I like. I did it. I love I've actually enjoyed wrestling a little bit. Jiu Jitsu was a little boring for me, a little stale for me. Mm-hmm. Um I just I I like that action and, and explosiveness. Um I could have worked on uh probably my marketability. Mm-hmm. I did I just didn't have the right people around me, the right people helping me. I wasn't in the right gyms. I uh, didn't have the right team around me. I, if I probably would have had the right team, mm-hmm. I would have been. It would have been way different. And <laughs> those those one twenty fivers over there, and possibly maybe the one fifteeners, they they would have had a, a problem. Would you? Would is there anyone in in the UFC that you want to go head up with right now? That yeah, you? Would I would love Shevchenko. Okay. I would love to box Shevchenko in, in bare knuckle. <laughs> yeah. I love her. Yeah. I'm a fan. But I would still love to, you know, tell line with her. I wanna I wanna spar with her. I wanna I, I want us to work with each other. Yeah. But um yeah, I would love to test myself against someone like her. She's 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 great. Um but there's not anybody a, a lot of the time I like to like pick somebody that I don't like. I just don't like the way she moves. Like <laughs> And then mm. they just, just drill at it, drill mm. at it, drill at it. But mm. I mean, right now there's nobody over there that I really dislike. Mm-hmm. I just don't prefer MMA. I think it's boring. Oh man, yeah. If you were to tell me that before <laughs> I went to BKFC 57, <laughs> I'd have been like, "What are you talking about?" Now I'm like, "Yep, <laughs> uh, that's actually pretty accurate." Yeah, half the fights are but pretty I, boring. But I respect the athletes. Yep. I respect the fighters. It's just. It's hard for me to watch unless I'm watching like a Shevchenko or like somebody that I really, really like. But I can't just sit there and watch a card. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. After, especially after Bare Knuckle. So w- when I when I meet you or I, when I'm at Jules and I see you and how you engage with people and how big your heart is um, outside of the sport, right? Just like your attributes, you're, you're happy, you're positive. Where does that come from? I'm grateful. I'm just grateful. You know, I'm I'm very grateful when I'm in those positions. I've worked really hard and sacrificed a lot. And so when I, when I have fans around or when I have people that like to see me fight or sponsor me or support me and it's just like, damn, you know, it's, it's, it's special, you know, it's special for people to do that, you know, and give you their time and their money just to watch you perform and do what you love and watch you succeed. You know, for their, I know they're entertained and they love that, but at the same time, they're supporting you. You know, there's a lot of people that fly in to watch me. There's a lot of sponsors that help me. Just a lot of people that support me, my family, my friends and teammates and coaches. And it's just, I'm just grateful. I, yeah. A lot of, a lot of people are arrogant about it. Like, oh, I'm a fighter. Yeah. I'm this, I'm that. It's like, bro, without them, you're nothing, dude. You're nothing. You're performing for them. You know, and they are feeding your family, you know, so I think there should be a lot more appreciation to the people. Yeah, you definitely have a humility about you that's, I would say, rare for a world champ, for sure. So Tiffany Mensus, so yeah. a long time ago when uh, I fought her, you know, and she was a six-time world champion at the time, and I was a nobody, right? Um, she reached out to me. She's like, how are you doing? You know, she was just real kind to me. And, you know, like in the MMA culture, they're not very nice over there. And um, I've never seen it really. Um, there's a couple of people that were okay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so when she approached me, I was just like, why are you even talking to me? She like checked up on me through social media, like hit me up. Are you cool? Like, how's your heart doing? You know, and I'm just like, why are you even, you know, contacting me? Like, you don't even have to do this. Like, you're a world champion, successful, this, that. And she's just like, dude, you're, we're humans. Like it's just human to human so like when i seen that from her that's that gave me my way to be able to give back to when i became a world champion because when you're a world champion and and to other athletes they look up to you or they Mm -hmm. see you in a certain light so you really have a lot of 
um, influence on people and, and you can hurt people. Mm. Like you can hurt the, how, the, how, how they're building themselves. You can knock them down a yeah. little bit easier. And so when she didn't do that to me, after even the way I came at her when we were going to fight, like I was <laughs> crazy when I came at her and mm. I came pretty disrespectful. So <laughs> to her to do that yeah. was like, wow, yeah. you know, and it, and it did teach me how to be as a champion. Yeah. You know, so I, I learned from her, you know, in ways and, yeah. and a lot of other people have taught me along the way how, how to conduct myself. And I just been fortunate to be around some good people. Yeah. You got this really great attribute. It feels like you've mastered something that a lot of athletes haven't. Where does that come from? I have to know <laughs> when to, where, how to channel things. So that, you know, from my previous life and the anger problems I have and, and the, the emotional and the mental problems of, that are inside me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, super anger problems. So I had to learn to control that shit or I'm going to end up back locked up. Yeah. So, and I think that, mastering that and not ending up you know using alcohol or drugs to mask those feelings or to subdue it or to make me feel better or to forget that helps you everywhere and so like when i get to fighting especially in the gym you know if you're sparring um somebody and they're smaller than you you have to have a control or you know if i'm sparring a 10 year old boy i'm not going to go in there and hit him like a grown adult mm -hmm. Um, so there's so many things in martial arts and combat sports that you have to control your, your, how hard you hit somebody, how you talk to people, how you approach things. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I'm, when I'm in competition, I get to let it all go. Yeah. That's, that's a hundred percent my dark side. And I let that Tim Grover, Oh yeah. uh, you read that one. Yeah. yeah. So Tim Grover, the dark side, that's where it opened my mind up to is, you know, you can have that dark side, mm -hmm. but you just have to control it. You mm -hmm. have to control it and, and know when to use it, when not to use it. Yeah. And I use it all for my opponents during my training. When, when I'm there, my promotional is kind of like my real dark side that I get to let out, but legally and, and for entertainment. So I turn the negative into a positive to, to benefit me. And then, you know, and then I and then I get to be my regular self, my regular human self. That's not the destructive side. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of that destructive, ang destructive, angry, angry side. Then I have that that side of me that is the better person. I mm -hmm. guess you could say. So it sounds like you've made friends with your dark side. Absolutely, you have to. Right. You have to, dude, because yeah. it. Some of us just have that in us. It's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. That shit's not gonna go away, dude. I've I've tried, like <laughs> I've tried, like forget it, like it's it's there. It's always gonna be there. So you have to learn to control it and and use it in positions. Use it for things that are gonna be, help be successful or put it in a positive positive yeah. way. Yeah, you know, fighting yeah. is not the greatest thing, right? But it's a sport, and I stop at the bell. I, I follow the rules. I don't fight too dirty. I don't think mm -hmm. you, you would think I was a dirty fighter. No. So, um, I mean, I'm doing it right. Yeah. And, and I've learned to deal with that mm -hmm. side of me. Well, the caveat is everybody has a dark side, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, and, and for the audience, maybe just to conceptualize it, um, there's a public facing image that you want everyone around you to, to assume as you. And then there's a, a private facing image that most people don't experience of you, right? right. So ex it exists, but um, yeah, if you don't ever play in that world or, or nurture, and I don't want to say nurture it, but like, you know, like you get it, right? right if, yeah. if you don't have an outlet for that, it'll take the wheel oh. whether or not, you know, and, and then the extreme behaviors come out like, I love Relentless by Tim Grover. That was oh, like yeah, it's re that Relentless. Book. Yeah, it was, That's like, my it was thing, a game dude. changer. It dude, was like, that changed my life. Yeah. My, my it life. changed. Oh, dude, I yeah. just, I <laughs> said, I sent a message to him like years ago. Yeah. He finally just answered back. Let's go. <laughs> Tim, go. I was like, yeah. I was like, dude, you changed my life because I didn't know 
you know, the cleaner, you know, everything yep. I'm talking the cleaner, mm -hmm. um, the dark side, mm -hmm. how to, I, I just think I was crazy. Yeah. You know, yep. cause I'm so obsessive and stuff I, in stuff I do. 100%. So it's like he, it, it, it helped me understand myself yeah. and know that, um, it's not normal, but it's normal for us. It's normal when you're seeking excellence, like what right. you right yeah, now that's what are yeah, at the yeah, epitome yeah. of, of this trailblazing new sport that is like more akin to being a gladiator than anything else. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like you have to tap into these parts, these parts of your nature. Right. And, but it's like getting or, or, or experiencing like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. like he would punch his, his his uh teammates in the face if they drop you know what i mean if yeah. they drop the ball like yeah. you're like what you never imagined that right you know but then then you you start reflecting you're like that's real right you know why is why is tiger woods why was he you know in the closet he was in the closet freak and he right. cheated on his wife you right. know like like we all that's have, his dark side. yeah that's his dark side yeah right and so it's like you know admitting that or or kind of reconciling oh okay so this is more normal right than you'd think but people yes. who are more in the public image. They can't reveal it. They can't reveal it. And that's what I loved about the book. Yeah. Because people that want great success and are willing to work that hard and willing to go that far, especially in a, well, a combat sport too. Yeah. And, and the things that we do, we're if we're doing stuff like that, you know we take things to crazy yeah. limits. So to be able to, and, and NBA, like Michael Jordan, how far he went to be who he was imagine the things he had to do and sacrifice and yep. where his mind was right it's insane kobe bryant all these guys it's it's good to be able to relate to someone I, i'm not a michael jordan or a kobe bryant but that level of thinking hey, and, don't sell and, yourself and short commitment. don't sell yourself short come on <laughs> but that level possible. of commitment is what i desire and i that I, burns me that's amazing so I love oh, that yeah. book, man. Yeah. I mean, you're trailblazing and you are the women, you have the win streak in the women's division. So you have the record right now for most wins, right? In the women's division. I, I believe so. Yeah. Is that seven <laughs> or eight in the row? Um, eight in a row. Eight in a row. Yeah, I'm eight yeah. in a row. Wait, no, no. I just focus on the next fight. No, no, no. You're you good. Yeah, you're I good. Just no, focus. I just read a stat that you, uh, when you were on your six fight win streak, and I believe that was two fights ago. So that's why I was like. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I don't nerd out on relentless Tim Grover too much. Oh, with I, people. Do. I was like, this is what I read Dude. it back in 2014. I was like, this is it. I did 2015. I'm, I'm not a freak. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> yeah. how I felt. That yeah. was just it, everything clicked for me. Yeah. Have you read any of Robert Greene's books? Of course. 48, 48 Laws of Power. 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. Love human nature. Yep. Oh, I love that. that stuff. He has. And a lot of people will be like, oh, 48 Laws of Power is crazy and stuff, but it's real. Mm -hmm. Oh, bro. It's so just, real. it's just so real. And yep. that's how real shit is. People move like that. And what he said was, and I watched the interview. I watch, I, I watch a lot of interviews with him. He's literally my favorite author. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. dope. And he's just like, look, this is not just for people to be evil. This is for you to be aware of this shit. Not just to be doing what was written if you've read it or you heard anything mm -hmm. about 48 laws of power you would know it can get pretty crazy oh people really are really scared out here to read that book they're like no no no, i don't i don't believe in that type of world uh you're in it whether you believe right, yeah, it. Right, <laughs> yeah. if you believe, it's like this isn't the two you can fairy. either be prepared yeah. or not dude. yeah and, yeah and your your background's from the streets so you yeah. saw that all the fucking time oh you're like it so can't trust anybody it, yeah when i read it it was so natural yep like, I was just like, oh, okay, I just see this shit. I, I do this shit, some of this stuff. And, <laughs> you know, um, it's just natural human human, in, it's human behavior, yeah. period. Whether period. people want to admit it or not, and they want to live in their, their rose-colored glasses, they call it. It's, it's not that, dude. And we can be positive about mm -hmm. our, our our life and stuff like that, but we still got to know what the hell's out there. A hundred percent. You know? I was, I was talking to, to Jay, the, the creative director, and I was saying, bro, people are mistaken out here. These business tycoons and business titans, they're fucking gangsters. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, don't. They're like, the gangsters of gangsters. Of gangsters of gangsters. They're they got smart. gangsters on payroll. Right. Yeah. Like they're they, smart. it's, yeah. So I'm like, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the, the higher you climb up on the ladder, the more you're going to experience mm -hmm. it. Right. And Absolutely. I'm sure you've experienced it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very, um, 
careful who I yeah. allow in yeah. my circle. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of inner circles, let's let's change the beat. I know people are getting uncomfortable on this. Oh podcast. yeah. <laughs> Forty eight laws of power. Shadow. Yeah, right. Shadow. I could get deep. My dark side. <laughs> oh shit. This is getting too real. <laughs> well, I mean, the way I fight, you gotta know I gotta. Yeah, dark side, yeah, man. yeah. That was dope. I didn't expect that at all. But no, speaking of inner circle, you have a really powerful team that you found and and some have been attracted to you and some you've attracted and and vice versa where um how did that happen i mean it's just uh, just believe keep believing keep believing you know because there's a million people that have been in my life that <laughs> sucked yep. you know but there, it's finally come it's my time i, I always say yeah my it's my time it's my time because it's my time right now and so it's my time to attract the great people it's my time to be able to experience great people and successful people and um and I, they offer things to me and I offer things for them. Yeah. So I just, it's just my time. You know, sometimes, you know, we're lonely in life or we don't have people around or it's horrible people around, but it come, if you keep trying, you keep at it, it will come, you know, the good people around you. So I just think it's the positive energy and the, me keeping uh, the belief in myself and my craft and, and what I was doing, it like tracks alike. Right. So people with the, that are like minded are around me right now. Very successful, very um, goal oriented. And uh, they just want success and to be to make their business better, make themselves better. That's what's surrounding me right now. Yeah. Speaking of amazing, successful people, you just proposed. Mm -hmm. Yes. To an amazing, successful person. Yes, I did. <laughs> By the name of Jules. Yes. She's in the background. Yes. <laughs> can, you share, can you share a little bit with the audience about that, yeah. that relationship? Yeah. I mean, that came out of nowhere. It, it, it didn't, wasn't supposed to happen. We were friends. And actually, she was my manager. And um, it, 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 we're t from two different worlds, <laughs> two different cultures. It's challenging. It's it's fun. It's hard. It's good. It's it's everything. You know, it's everything that you want in a relationship. Um, it is. You know, um, supportive. There's love. There's hard lessons. There's tough love. There's sweet love. You know, there's we. It's it's a mixture of everything, and um, we've both been um, good for each other in each other's life you know, in terms of business, in terms of personal life. Um, but yeah. So what, okay. So it sounds like, you know, that it happened, right? Like what, right. when did you know you wanted to spend the rest of your life with her? If you can deal with me uh, for more than three weeks, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, she's a, a genuine good person, you know, a genuine good person that just wants love, just wants a good life, wants to raise a family. And that's all I want to, you know, I just simple, not demanding, not crazy. That's hard to find in a girl, dude. I, I'm sure you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I just, I just knew that my play days are over. <laughs> <laughs> my play days are, no. Uh, um, hanging up the jersey. <laughs> the jersey <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm just happy. And, at peace in the love area i mean and before you paint jules as just this you know picture perfect of stability and centeredness i, I do want to uh ask you about something interesting that i learned about your guys's dynamic right so jules is the matchmaker for bkfc yeah and her number one goal yeah is to find somebody that can beat you <laughs> so i told you it was <laughs> tough love too <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get her. <laughs> so let's talk about that. We're very competitive. Okay. No, yeah. we're very competitive. Yeah. And we we there is a she she is a perfect person for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's perfect. Um but she can find girls to try and beat me. Okay. And I welcome that because <laughs> it's just kind of like okay, I know it's not like a, okay, a guy and a girl relationship, right? Yeah. A girl sees you go out and fi fight a dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to go home. I mean, you're not going to go out there and get your ass whooped, right? Right. Because you want to go home to your woman like, I did that, right? Same thing in the ring. 
I'm not going to go out, out there and get my ass whooped mm-hmm. by some girl and then come back and like expect my girl to respect me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh like she's gonna be like what can yeah. i whoop your ass like, right right second so, guessing her huh? yeah so yeah. so that's i love i love that kind of mm-hmm. competition and, mm-hmm. and it doesn't even if she did find somebody that i i mean it Doubt could it. never happen that- but if it happened i mean <laughs> i mean i'm an eye for an eye type so i'm gonna find a way to get her ass but <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it's not yeah. going to end the relationship or anything. Right. right, right. Yeah. It's not going to end the relationship, but I promise that uh, you better watch your job, girl. So I might come take it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now that I'm retired oh. from somebody beating me. <laughs> talking, talking about the dark side. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. It just <laughs> peaked its ugly head. Huh? <laughs> that was amazing. When she told yeah. that, yeah, when she told this out, I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. No, it's, it's, it, it's yeah. <laughs> It's it's very confusing. whatever motivates you to be the best. Do right. it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Sometimes you got to pull from those dark places. That's fucking so cool. That's so cool. So what do you, what what's your message to the people out there that may think that you're an overnight success? How long have you been in this game as a pro fighter? Uh, I've been in the combat sports. That's when I stopped getting locked up. <laughs> so um, eighteen years, right? I'm I'm old now. Or 17 years or something. 17 years. Uh, but, I mean, we know that I only got my world title two years ago. So it's been forever. Yeah. And it took a lot of promotions, a lot of people to, uh, denying me, telling me I'm not made for their promotion or I don't have the look or I don't have this, I'm not that or I'm not whatever. What's your message to them now? Man, just keep doing you. Keep believing in you. If there's that feeling inside of your heart and soul that won't let you quit, and you have no idea why and it drives you crazy, just keep going. Because that's what I did. I, I had no idea why I couldn't stop. I could not stop. I just kept following it, following it, following it. No matter, no food, no, couldn't pay rent, couldn't do this, couldn't do that, lost exes, and couldn't see family members, sacrificed time. Just keep at it. Don't ever give up, no matter what. If it's that deep burning, mm-hmm. if it's burning that deep, and you'll know. You know what I'm saying? You can't give up on something that you truly have a calling for. So don't try. <laughs> you're right. Because it's you're just prolonging the, the inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's so 15 years to stay motivated to get to where you're at. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know. I'm very stubborn. Yeah. I, if I if I want something, I'm going to get it. Period. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. If you were to explain why. Because P- BKFC is right now in this really amazing place. Yeah. It's like, it feels like everything has kind of been under the surface and now it's all just like a rocket ship, right? It's on the way up. Yeah. Well, in your own words, why would you say that is? It's raw. It's, there's a lot of people in this promotion that weren't given chances. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that are hungry here. A lot of people that want to put it all online. Because if you can go out there with bare knuckle, and and put it out on the line and take those hits and and take that um, take that risk because it's scary, right? Yeah. Um, you have something different in, in you. I think mm-hmm. bare knuckle is very special fighters. We're we're very special, you know. And we, we like to put it online. There's a lot of guys will go in there and they'll find out real quick they're not made for it. Or girls, they'll find out real quick. But the ones that are made for it, we're out there to put on a show mm-hmm. and put it on the line. And we're not going to all have perfect performances every time, but most of us are out there to shine. And I think that the staff and and the matchmakers and the promoter, they have an eye for for certain athletes. And, and they're giving chances to people that maybe some wouldn't you know, and, and they're building their own stars. They've built their own stars. They pulled other stars in, but they need that to survive, <laughs> you know, to bring the numbers in. So what they put together is amazing. And a lot of people like that raw, like that blood, like that violence. It's human nature, you know, for a lot of us ta- don't tap into it. A lot of us do. Yeah. And there's a lot of fans out there that want to see bare knuckle and or they want to see the knockouts and, and the blood. Yeah. So I, I think it's just gonna it's gonna take off even more and more. And the more skilled uh, as we we get as built uh, bare knuckle boxers, 
the better the fights are going to be because you have to be smart. Yeah. You have to be smart. And, and what the promotion wants, they want really exciting, violent fights. So they tell us that they're like, Hey, go out there and fight your ass off. And if you don't, you're not coming back. Oh, wow. you know, yeah. you're not coming back. Yeah. So it's a little bit of fire mm -hmm. to get us out there yeah. to fight. So that's, that's what we need because I mean, you, when you watch a boring fight, Oh my God. Man, it's the worst. the worst. It's the worst thing to experience. And it happens so fast, too. Dude, yeah, just, like just like that. Like, that main the... event, the UFC with um, mm -hmm. the guy from here. Mm -hmm. Strickland versus whatever. That other. That yeah, yeah. was, oh, my God. <laughs> I watched that because I was like, okay, the guy's from Vegas. I don't really yeah. don't like Strickland too much. Um, yeah. You know, he says dumb shit about women. I was going to ask you about you it. You know, yeah, he's a. Oh, he's So he, he has a snippet going super viral uh, talking about nobody watches females yeah wants to watch i mean i have better technique than he ever will you know so i mean i don't know what he's talking about I, yeah. I i i've never had a fight as boring as his the other night ever in my life so i don't know what he's talking about he just needs to go back to his trailer you know what i mean <laughs> coming and i'm in vegas too bro so if you want to fight me do you like to like pick on girls you probably like to fight them too don't you mm. you know Ooh. okay okay <laughs> hey those are some uh, some words. Some would say that he earned that that clap back just now. Yes, he so, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he certainly very, did. No tact. Not a lot of tact with the way he speaks. No. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's no don't hate on girls just because you want to fight. Yeah. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. There's a lot of people that like to watch it though, and and we get we get sponsored, and yeah. sponsors love us too, and promoters love love us too. So, I mean, there's there's, one there's no arguing. I mean, when we went to BKFC fifty seven. The fast pace. I don't think any of those fights didn't end in either a stoppage or a knockout. Right. Wild. Yeah. There's not ever, you're never watching two people fight in the ring bare knuckle and being like, oh, this is boring, or looking at your phone. Everybody in that arena, all eyes so on that ring. And the sounds, oh, they're dope. Uh, so it's so dope. It's yeah. so dope. So I raw, love it. So, so unfiltered and relatable. It's so fucking it relatable. Is. It is, dude. Everyone's gotten in a fist fight or Everyone. seen a fist fight. So they know who's winning and who's losing. Yep. <laughs> you exactly. Can't yeah. Yep. There's not ever a time where you're rolling, you know, like half the time, if you've ever been in a UFC fight, you're sitting, you know, if you're lucky enough to sit close enough, if they're rolling around, you have no idea what the fuck is going on. Yeah, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. It's like, what? What's I going barely on? know when yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I dude, freaking <laughs> train it. I'm like, dude, what? And so why is he sniffing his so you're ass you're telling me I, no, need a, I need an education i need a phd in jujitsu <laughs> <Right. laughs> <PhD>. true <laughs> fucking grappling true i need to spend 10 you know ten thousand <laughs> hours to learn what they're doing on that mat to be entertained by it i'm good you yeah know? no so for but people sure, yeah people yeah. just want simple <laughs> they well, want to drink some beers and get on and, and watch some people beat each other oh my gosh fair enough is where it's at <laughs> there's no, i've never seen so much blood on a mat yep it's amazing <laughs> So there's another part of, of bare knuckle that a lot of people aren't. It, there's like an education piece, right? Where you're trying to educate the audience. Although it looks more violent. Can you speak a little bit to how actually it's safer than boxing and MMA? Yeah. So, I mean, we're not taking kicks to the head. We're not mm -hmm. taking knees. You know, um, we're not. There's the blows we can only take. <laughs> you can't take 50 bare knuckles to the dome piece. Yeah. It, you're either going to get cut. Or you're going to get knocked out, you know? So the damage, it's aesthetic. Yeah, you get, you're getting cuts and stuff like that. I don't care. I got my war wounds. I'm a fighter. I don't care. That's, I'm, I know that's going to happen. Yeah. But what I really fear is like the inside of my brain. I want to be able to remember my, my future wife. I want to remember her name. I want to remember my name. I want to remember my parents and my brother. Um, and I believe that like boxing and, and MMA just, it, that's covered to, cause more damage and that's inside damage so you don't get cut as much and, yep. and you can take more blows and the, the gloves are bigger so it it has more impact on your brain and um bare knuckles it ends too quick oh, yeah. you can't sit there and take as much as you can in a boxing or an yeah. mma fight um it, it's it's simple math yeah, I mean, and if you think part, about it, there's a part right with with boxing bouts being so long, a fighter can get knocked down five, six times in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're longer, right? Yeah. So longer time, more time. Yeah, on the there's map. longer time. And so when you get knocked down, and when you when you're in between that phase of consciousness and unconsciousness, that's when your your brain is more susceptible to damage. So when you get back up for a ten count, and then you fight another, you know, 
mm-hmm. nine rounds or eight rounds, yeah. you get more damage to the brain, right? And so, and we're speaking to this, and I know you've been a part of an interesting study, right? With the uh, neuroimaging, they, they've been scanning your brain, your For about functions. seven years, yeah. Seven years, what is that? It's um, Cleveland Clinic, uh, it's called the Fighter Program. Mm-hmm. So they came to me, a lo- somebody came to me a long time ago and said, hey, do you wanna do brain scans and you wanna make a couple hundred bucks? Or, I was like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I had no money. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, definitely want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in there. And then I found out that, you know, they scan my brain uh, year after year. Or they offered it year after year to see the damage on fighters. So I was just, at first I did it for the money. I was yep. like, yeah, I need that hundred or two, uh, 200 bucks. And um, then I was just like, oh, yeah, I want to be part of this study. You know, I want to be a part of being able to you know, have data for future women mm-hmm. because they don't have that much on women. There's a lot for men, but there's not as much for women. So over the years, uh, I, I'm seeing if I'm declining and, and if my cognitive and all that stuff is getting worse by the year, but I, I'm doing okay so far. I go this February something for this year. So I haven't seen this year yet, but uh, the prior years, I've actually gotten better. And I think it's less damage. Less That's damage. Amazing. I sense bare knuckle, and I yeah. swear, yeah. if people want to inquire, yeah. I have the data from Cleveland Clinic that my cognitive and everything's getting better. Everything. I, I forgot exactly all the the like cognitive science. function. Yeah, the con- cognitive mm-hmm. and like neurogenesis. Like yeah. you have more neurons, some or synapses. Nah, I don't know about oh, all you know that, about that. Okay. but but I just know it's improving. They're like, yeah, it's actually. Oh, my speech so they do like That's speech amazing. like a yep. speech like i have to read stuff mm-hmm. every year the same thing and can we access that like can the public access those I, that research right now i don't know you if know. the pu- public can mm-hmm. but it's it's probably what medical so they can't it depends on how it's funded right it's, i get, well yeah. i don't probably i think it has to be public facing unless okay. it's funded yeah. by private money yeah, I'm not sure like how big that's. Pharma is not I need to right. find out, okay. like, so yeah, I yeah. can be more educated when I'm talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no idea. But yeah. um, I'm sure you got people yeah. can call down there and find out. You yeah. know, Cleveland Clinic in Las Vegas, it's uh, the fighter study. Okay. And they'll they'll direct you straight there. They're very very good with customer service, and they actually fly people in, you know, to do the test. And they want more and more fighters. Yeah. To um, retired, um, current fighters amateurs they want them all so yeah that's that's a huge w for bkfc if that's the case yeah because you've been in the sport for the last four years five years yeah or since its inception five years ago yeah five wow five years. yeah so i was on bkfc three let's go i was supposed to be on two yeah but then my, the girl backed out i was there he got paid for it they paid me I, I showed up did you get a w for that no oh okay no but i got paid because i weighed in and they they paid me my money i was like do you want, you want to talk about the fighter pay I heard BKFC pays way better than UFC. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting paid good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I'm getting paid good. And, you know, it's just it's just the work you put in and, and the marketing that I'm putting in and stuff like that. And I, I it varies from fighter to fighter, I'm sure. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. um, if you have a following of 200 people and you're asking for $2 million, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm i sure people are doing that. The math isn't mathing. <laughs> right, the, the math isn't mathing. <laughs> I'm sure that's happening no. or like, yeah. and you put on boring shows. Right. I mean, and then, I mean, you have to, it has to make sense for the promotion. It has to make sense for the fighter. It has to go both ways. So I'm getting decent money. You know, um, I've earned it. Um, I, I have great sponsors because of BKFC. People are jumping on board left and right. Yeah. Um, I'm doing good. So I, I think the rumors are true though, that BKFC probably pays better overall than UFC. I think so. I mean that this is coming from fighters, right? Not just like yeah. random fans. I, I and I don't know the pay on yeah, yeah. like the 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 guys coming in, you know, and just some guys that tell me, oh, I, I got paid this or. Yep. I mean, I, they're getting, they're doing well. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know everybody's pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That's good. <laughs> just memorizing it. Like a spreadsheet. Right. That's funny. So can you can you share with the audience for everyone watching? Where are we? And what are we sitting in front of? Oh, this is the Raja. So this is frequency, sound frequencies that help the mind. What you say, I feel like it's what you set your intentions to. Uh-huh. And I know there's much more science to it. Yeah. That Dr. Jer has mm-hmm. to break down because I'm 
layman's terms to the mm-hmm. max with that. But for me, like I have anger um, issues. I have anxiety issues. I have a whole bunch of stuff. I have stuff that performance anxiety, a whole bunch of stuff that I use this for. So when I go in there, it's like a meditation. It's just a meditation. You sit in a chair, you put a grounding blanket on, um, the yeah. eye mask, uh-huh. the eye mask on and, um, headphones yeah. and you listen to the frequencies. They sound kind of crazy, but if you look up what, uh, sound frequency, sound frequencies can do to your brain, mm-hmm. you will be amazed. Yeah. Um, so I just focus on like for my last fight, I was focusing on the knockout. I was focusing on, um, being prepared for my press conferences, being prepared, uh, for my next workouts. Um, it gave me energy. It helped me sleep. I have a really hard time sleeping. I have to use melatonin every single night. Mm. This helped me with that. Help me bring down my anxiety. That's my biggest thing is my anxiety. Like I'll do deep breaths all the time. And it's like, I'm not tired when I'm training. It's just literally anxiety. Or if I'm sitting here, like I'll have to take deep breaths in because I have anxiety problems, but this really, really helps when I'm consistent with it. And, um, coming in every week or three times a week or doing hour sessions and, and really letting it soak in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've gone on record and said like, this is giving you the edge, right? Oh yeah. Definitely give me the edge. I mean, my last fight, if you look at any of my other fights, just while I'm in action, in fight, when I'm fighting, I am, I, I can't get loose in it. I'm just like, <sighs> I got to get loose and see everything, feel everything. I, I was talking to her. You know, I was just like, ha I broke your nose, dude. <laughs> and like, it was the whole, le- we, we both started laughing. Like, I know that probably shouldn't happen, but it was so, I was <laughs> so, so loose. Good. I was so clear. Yeah. And during my weight cut, it just helped me push through that. And I have a really hard weight cut. So it's, I know people don't understand when I say that, oh, it's just a weight cut. It's, they don't understand how hard it is mentally and how much it really feel like I didn't lose as much energy, mm-hmm. like through the weight cut. Uh, if you haven't had a weight cut, you don't kind of don't know what I'm talking yeah. about, but, um, it just helped my, me not be so tense, like sitting in the heat or sitting in another blanket that's full of heat. And I had to go on another blanket full of heat, mm-hmm. you know, it just kind of, brought my 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 the crazy like me wanting to get out of there being usually i'm super mean like i'm like dude give me water or give me ice because i'm so like depleted it wasn't like that it was just chill it really helps it really helps yeah i mean some people say that this is the future of high sports performance for sure and yeah. any, anyone that's uh, listening or watching, if you guys go to Adaptive Leaders episode 30 with Dr. Jerry uh, du- Rivera Duhenio, that he'll go into a little bit more in depth on the science side of things. He sounds really smart. I sound really... <laughs> no, I no, just know it helps a lot, yeah, guys. That's, that's yeah. all you need to know. Yeah. yeah, you're, yeah. You're, not, you're not a scientist. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like quantum physicist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, yeah what is it? Uh, quantum morphogenetics physicist or something like that. Yeah. PhD, like super smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> his uh his content, his clips of him talking about three, six, nine and, and base twelve mathematics. Yes. Even TikTok is going crazy. They're going nuts over it. You got like a million five views on him talking about base twelve mathematics, which is what this frequency machine yeah. is built off of. So I'm just a consumer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting, but uh, and I tried it and it, it really does, I, at least the, the version or what he inputted in there yeah. before we went in there. I'm super calm, super collected. Yeah. Almost too centered, you know, yeah. where I'm like, what questions was I going to ask again? Because I'm, you know what I mean? I, I do a lot of prep before these. And yeah. I was like, hold on, let me look at my phone. You know? <laughs> I was just like, where am I? Yeah. When I came out, it was only 15 minutes. So it really works as a role model to so many young people. Uh, women out there what's some advice that you'd give the next generation of women whether they choose combat sports or not just in general what maybe lessons or piece of advice can you share with them that you've experienced like you're at the top of your your game right now it's it's just to humans right or just to everybody just like be open-minded and easy on yourself but hard on yourself in ways of like 
be hard on yourself when you're uh, trying to achieve and you're trying to get things done. Don't don't give up on things. Um, be easy when you screw it up, you know, to get back on. Never give up. And just that's my main thing is just don't ever give up because there's a million times I want to give up. A million times that I was on the streets, I want to give up. A million times in this um, endeavor, this combat sports journey, I just was like, what the hell am I doing? People looking at me like, you are like, in a, you, all you're doing is an, an expensive hobby, you know, and, and this is not a career. This is a, a hobby for you, you know, and just being looked at like I'm crazy, like I, I'm making the wrong decision or I don't know what I'm doing. Just if you believe in yourself and you know something is going to be successful, just don't stop. Just don't stop. No matter who around you says different. Mm -hmm. If you know deep down, just never give up. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's very simple. Yeah. It's very simple. And you just got to keep pushing through all of that shit. You are radically self-expressed. The way you look, with your tats, everything, right? Now you're on social media and you're getting a, a, a large following and that's amplified. How do you deal with the critics on social or do you deal with it? You know, cause that's like a, if, if no one has ever experienced what it, it is to get a million eyeballs on your content or on, on you as an individual and have a direct line to just like comment whatever the right. fuck they want. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> it gets crazy <laughs> sometimes, yeah. dude. I'm like, who yeah. you don't like me, bro. <laughs> like, damn, like, whoa. When I was younger, it used to bother me more. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, I'm just used to it. You know, I just, I've had everything said to me. Everything said to me, positive and negative. I have more positive than I do negative. Um, oh now, God, that's okay. yeah, now, yeah. well, at the moment, yeah, maybe, at, the maybe moment. <laughs> at the moment, it does go in waves. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I just, sometimes some guys I'll hit up, like some guys that are haters are like, oh, you want to be a man and all this shit. And I'm like, mm. bro, I'll be like, bro, why are you, why do you say that? Or I'll, I'll just mm. say something. I don't know exactly. I'll say something to like something to them. Mm. And I swear they'll end up in my inbox. Like, I'm sorry, dude. I would just That's do it. I swear. I, no, I like, believe you. Like I believe you. half the time, yeah. maybe more than yeah. half. Yeah. Like it's just people just trying to get attention mm -hmm. and people thinking the way I look is I'm meaner than I am or mm -hmm. I'm more arrogant than I am or I'm trying to be a man. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be a man. I definitely want to be a female and mm -hmm. my girl loves me being a female. Like we're good. Like I'm not trying to take your – Balls, bro. <laughs> <laughs> trying to like, take your manhood. Here. I'm, I'm just not trying to me. take your manhood. Yeah. Like, you be a man. I'm gonna be over here and be my little tomboy self. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of the dudes, they they'll come back. Just half of them will be cool. Other half, they just they they just want to look for a fight. So I just the way I deal with it, I don't I don't take it personal. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people are going through their own shit, and I'm just their punching bag at the time. Yeah. Or I'm just their entertainment. And mm -hmm. I know what I signed up for. Yeah. I'm entertainment, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm here to be a punching bag. I'm here to be this. I'm here to be that. Not that I accept that, mm -hmm. but I just know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I just, but I don't take it, like, serious. Yeah. Like, but if my girl said something like that to me, I'd be like, oh, my, my feelings be hurt. Yeah. yeah, the hurt feelings or something. But somebody I don't know or that doesn't know me, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Something that we, we learned with the brand, we started getting more attention on some of the content. It, something that helped us was think about the mental state of somebody spewing negativity. Like any healthy person or healthy minded person, when's the last time you went on social media, scrolled and talked shit to anybody? Right. right. So it's not what you do. Right. You know? And so yeah. you're like thinking like, oh, that person's in a bad place. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. have to you have, you have to be in to a bad be. And so I'm just like, dude, you're in your own hell. Yeah. Like you are in your own hell. I do not need to make it worse. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll usually say something smart. Like someone says something to me, like, Oh, who's that dude? And I'll be like, um, shit, what does someone say? <laughs> some, <laughs> some smart ass shit. Like, <laughs> some smart ass. And I'll be like, or if they talk shit, I'll be like, oh, good one, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just clap back. And, just and for, yeah, yeah, just just yeah. say something. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, what? Yeah. Like, I don't ever like clap, clap, mm -hmm. clap back mm -hmm. for the like 99% of the time. Yep. Unless I was like in a bad mood or something. Mm hmm. And then they caught me on a bad day or something. Yeah. But for the most part, I don't 
there's no way there, there's no winning that. No, they're not going to show their face. Yeah, they're not going to come fight me. They're not going to meet me at the gym. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're. It's like I'm just literally. Fight, it's like fighting with a drunk person. Yeah, why don't? Yeah. Like, there's no point. <laughs> you're just, you're you new like clap back. Just like, come fight me, bro. Right? <laughs> fight, me, bro. <laughs> fight me, bro. That's right? hilarious. So the last thing I wanted to talk about this event, unprecedented. That your next fight in the works, right? Is it like a ninety percent chance, fifty percent? Yeah, like? no, this fight's gonna happen. Okay. And I know what fight you're talking about. Yeah. Chris Cyborg. Chris Cyborg. So it's going to happen. They're, it's in talks. Mm -hmm. they're, they're talking, but I don't know when. Okay. I just don't know the exact date. And, okay. and it sucks for me too because I'm mm. like, am I dropping down to 125 or am I going up to 145? Or am I going to 135? So I'm just kind of staying ready and staying in, trying to stay in shape at, in the middle. Kind of like in the middle there. So I'm not getting too heavy and I'm not getting too light. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know when that's going to be, but yeah. it's it's happening. And, and it was it was a dope experience and being able to step in the ring with her and challenge her and not just be like, hey, nice to meet you, Cyborg. It was, <laughs> you're an awesome champion. Like, right. no, I want to fight you. I like want to go toe to toe, knuckle up, toe the line with you. So your idols have become your rivals. Right? Right. Absolutely. Right. Dude, it's insane. It isn't, yes. So talk about that transition yeah. period. Like so how the do you idols become from being a fan and an idol? It was know? the weirdest thing. Yeah. Because I'm usually there like, I want her to mm -hmm. win. And mm -hmm. I'm, okay, I'm ringside right now and I went there to call her out. Right. And she doesn't know it. I this like I was just like, hey, this fight's going to be in California. I'll go call her out there. Yeah. Like it just came up and she's like, oh, I'll, let's go. I was like, let's go. I and, saw that, yeah. And so we go down there and I'm ringside, right? When she was getting ready to fight, I got a tag from somebody. It wasn't even mine. So I got ringside. They didn't even know I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching the fight and I'm like, okay, she come out. She starts to box a little bit. And I don't know, how, like, usually I'm like, knock her out. Like, let's go. Like, we're... And I'm just sitting there like, like contemplating, like analyzing, like how I'm going to beat her. Yeah. You know, like, okay, she got that. She, okay, that's where she's messed up. That's where she's weak. That's what. Now I'm analyzing her instead of, you know, of, like going for her, mm -hmm. even though I still wanted her to win. <laughs> um, then I see the girl get knocked out. Boom. I was like, okay. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> this girl just face planted in front of me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was right there. And, uh, and that's amazing. Yeah. Because I get to test my heart. All these girls that won't fight. In my division, they're like, oh, we're not ready. I'm not ready to fight you, this, that, or they want more money for this, or whatever, to fight me. I want to be the best, and um, I'm going to I'm gonna challenge the best, even if you just slap somebody right in front of me. That doesn't put any fear in my heart whatsoever. That just puts more drive in my heart to want to push and want to be a better fighter. I, that's what I feel like the athletes you know, should be doing is testing themselves, no matter how risky it is. I mean, it's not like you're going to go into a fight and be – taken out forever you know what i mean that's a very slim chance you might lose but who cares you're testing yourself and this could be the greatest fight of all time because the kind of heart and tenacity and and will i'm going to bring to that fight is going to be insane and what she brings to the fight is insane we already know what she brings you know um we don't see her get knocked out all the time like amanda nunes did you know that that's not what happens to chris cyborg um 99.9% .9 of the time. So that fight is going to be ridiculously crazy. And it's a risky fight. And it's a tough fight. But it's something that will um, I'll be able to live with forever and know that I did. And, yeah. and I faced. And um, I tested myself against the best and the scariest girl on the planet. So that championship mindset is, is what I call it, right? So most most fighters and their team they're like we got to calculate the perfect path for you to maybe get a chance at a shot at the belt right or to to have the belt but it, there's a there's a select breed of athletes that have that championship mindset that says fuck it i want the biggest baddest people right and and they they've reconciled the fact that to be the best they have to test themselves against the best not just claim you're the best. 100%, <laughs> right? And so yeah. was there a transition for you of when that started becoming the dominant voice, your dominant inner voice versus just like a thought, like, ooh, may maybe I'll take that fight. You're like, I want 
the biggest baddest. Yeah, it's it, I'm to that point where like mm. I don't have 10, 15 more years in the sport. Mm. And so I'm just like, dude, you got to do it. You do it now mm. because you're not going to have another chance. Mm. And th- there's only few, there's only, um, opportunity doesn't come all the time. Mm. Opportunities like this don't come all the time. It comes once in a lifetime. Like I'll be able to really make history. Like this is real history for me. That's history for me. Like, okay, yeah, I'm the first ever BKFC champion in the world, mm-hmm. right? At 125 pounds. That's amazing. And I'm super proud of that. But this is something I really, a huge legacy that I'll be able to set for myself, you know, that that is almost an impossible thing to do mm-hmm. at my size and, and in bare knuckle. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm fighting the probably the hardest hitting girl in bare knuckle. So to be able to conquer that, I might be like, okay, you did something. Yeah. I might be able to tell myself, okay, you did something now. Yeah. You know, because I, at this point, I'm just, how I look at myself is like, no, you haven't done enough. You, you, you haven't done enough. You haven't done enough. You haven't done enough. You need to do more. You need to do better. You need to do better. But for like maybe like a week, I might be like, okay, you did something. <laughs> if I right, right. when I beat her, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. you did something. That's how I feel about that. Mm. And people could say she, she, she's not who she was. She's not this and that. Cyborg is a beast, and she's not losing, mm. and she's running through everybody. So I mean, people could say what they want about her. They yep. they've always hated on her. So I don't care what they yeah. say. She she's a badass bitch, and there's a lot of men that won't fight her. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of men that wouldn't fight you either. So <laughs> let's be honest here, right? That's funny. Maybe in the DMs, but that's about it, right? <laughs> right? I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at that fight when you fight Cyborg, wherever it is. Tag me, tag Cyborg. Just tag okay. us all yeah, day yeah. long. Uh-huh. Just tag us, tag us, tag us. Because the more that gets blown up, the more it gets that people will yes. generate it. So we just need positive energy to that. And yeah. And to get that going, that's that's what I really want right now. Right now, I want out of the other people right now. Just yeah. let's get this fight together. And let's see if I can take, you know, some, some Chris Cyborg punches. <laughs> Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. This has been amazing. Getting a peek into a champion's mind, into your mindset, how you got to the top, and a little bit of background. Um, we want to share your story, amplify your message if we can over here on our end. If we brought you any value today, Please like, subscribe, share this with anyone that you think would be inspired or want to listen to this message and to uh, experience this interview. Until next time, peace. (laughs) Let's go.